Bible. Go ahead. I'm going from Romans 8 and 31. For those of y'all write it down, Romans 8 and 31. I'm going to go ahead and start reading there. Of course, I'm reading the English Standard Version. It says there, What then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He, did, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all. How will he not also with him graciously, the, the word, give us all things? Amen. If he's going to give his son, Come on. what won't he give to you? Come on. If he would give you his son, what would he hold back from you? Wow. Isn't that a blessing? Wow. So we're going to talk about things that are mission essential. We talked about last week. Is do the math part two, but today we're going to talk about God adding some things to us. Last week we talked about God subtracting. This week we're going to talk about God adding. Let us pray. If any man speak, let him speak of the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praised and dominion forever and ever. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. Mission essential things that we have to have. Amen. All right, things that you might give a glass. I'm sorry, that makes you right there. Things that we have to have. Amen. 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 Things that we're gonna need. And we talked last week about God taking some things away from us. Amen. But then we're talking now about God adding some things to us. And, and the Bible says that, that God gave His Son, His only Son. He said, "How will He not also with Him?" Graciously give us all things. Amen. So, we're going to talk really quickly about that. Allow God to add the things that you need. There are some essential things that you need. When the Bible talks about being perfect, it's talking about being complete. And it's talking about being whole. And, and so, therefore, there are some things that even if I'm saying that God says, i got to add some things to you to make you complete. Now, the thing about that is, is that with every assignment, I'm going to need different stuff. Yeah, and God says, to make you complete with this assignment, i got to add things to you. God is generous enough to give us everything that we need. To truly understand God, you must understand that he always tasks people. He gives people assignments that people, he tasks them beyond their natural ability. That seems to be God's nature. That when God gives you an assignment, is it beyond what you can do on your own? And it just means out of here. And the way to identify a God-ordained assignment is by how ill-equipped you are to do it with what you have and who you are. Amen. Isn't it God to tell someone to start a ministry and you got $55 inside your account? Come on. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't it God that will tell you, I need you to go for and speak to people? And your car better work in itself. Come on now. And he wants you to drive across town and do this. Isn't it God that sometimes will tell you, I want you to speak to people, but you a shy person. Yeah. You're not a public speaker anyway. Isn't it God to do those kind of things? Isn't it God that says, I want you to lead people, and you a very a person that wants to be in the background? Yeah. Does not God always seem to task you beyond what you think you can do? Amen. Yeah. Can y'all talk to teachers real quick? When you get a class and you get that first test, and you see how those students are not doing so well. And you say, Lord, i got to make sure these students pass this test. But you feel like you're inadequate to help them pass. Maybe it's just me I feel inadequate sometimes. Because sometimes when you're a good teacher, can I preach this real quick? When you're a good teacher, they send you sometimes some of the more troubled and some of the more difficult students. Y'all know about teaching this. Sometimes the best teachers, they say, no, we're going to give you the students who need the most work. Who need the most help. And then you look at it and you say, I don't want to fail these students, but in myself, I don't feel like I can do this. Yeah. Yeah. And, and isn't it God that when you go for ministry and God says, I want you to do all these things, but in yourself, you say, Lord, I don't have what it takes to do this. Yeah. <clears throat> I preach to myself. Because to do it, God adds to you and he makes you what he wants you to be. Now, I got to go to the book of Amos, the seventh chapter, and the 14th verse, because God is going to call Amos to be a prophet. And he goes before the people, and the people are saying, what qualifies you? And Amos answered and said to Amaziah, he said, I was no prophet, nor a prophet's son. I wasn't a preacher, I wasn't a preacher's son. But I was a herdsman and a 
dressed in a sycamore fig. But the Lord took me from following the flock. And the Lord said to me, go prophesy to my people Israel. He didn't ask Amos, can you do it? He didn't ask Amos, will you qualify? I said, Amos, I need you to prophesy. Well, God, I didn't come from a family of prophets. I was never a prophet. I was a herdsman. I was a dresser of sycamore fig. He said, but I need you to go prophesy. Get this. Amos made it clear that God added prophet to his list of vocations. He was already a herdsman. He was already a horticulturist. That means he grew things. But, 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 but God said he assigned him to be a prophet. So God had to add prophets into Amos for God's purpose. I'll speak this real quick. Because God says it don't matter what you do in the natural, it don't matter how many qualifications that you have, if I need you to do something, just do what I tell you to do, I will give you what you need to do what I told you to do. Amen. I told somebody something one time, and I said, you know, that one of the weird things about being a father was the fact that, you know, I, I was young, and I was very, I was 21 years old when my oldest was born, and, and I remember being in the hospital, and, and you get there, and, 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 and the, 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 the nurses come in every now and then, and they give you your son, and when they holler too much, you can say, you know, can y'all take it? Yeah, right. you, know, they, you, know, they, you know, they do it for the first couple of hours. You know, the wife is, you know, my, my wife was, was just having a baby and she was tired and everything. But after a while, they don't answer that phone like that. Don't do that. Right. Yeah. You, know, you got to go ahead and take this child. Yeah. You know, that's, that's your child, right? And I remember that, that I went to go and they said, you know, get the car seat. And we had bought the car seat. We had, or somebody gave it to us, probably doing, doing uh, uh, the baby shower and everything. But we had the car seat. And I had the car ready. And they were like, hey, you know, go get the car seat. And I, and I thought they were going to bring him down and stuff. And they said, no, no, no. He's yours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to tell you all this. At 21 years, of, years old, I felt very inadequate to take care of a child. All right. All right. And everybody else, and y'all were prepared for. I said, "No, you won't let me have it." He's mine. You know, I, I, I didn't really. It was hard because now I realize that child depends on me for everything. Yeah, everything. He depends on me. I said, "Lord, I, I, I'm better take care of myself. I, I'm gonna trust myself with myself, and I and I take care of a child." And I felt very inadequate. But you know, that's one thing about God that He said, "No, I'm gonna give you the skills yeah. to raise a son, but you have got to take him home first." Come back to that. Yeah. Come back to that. Come back to that a little bit. So, so God had to assign something to him. So I was always Daniel. I, I, I was a soldier at the time. I was a student. I was a man. I was not yet a father. And God says, you are now a father. I will give you the skills to be a father, but you got to take him home. Yes. Yeah. I come back to that. If God has a purpose and he decides to use a person to perform it, he is not concerned about their inadequacy. Inaccuracy means what you don't have, yeah, right. what you lack. He's not concerned about your inadequacy. He asked at them so that they can accomplish the mission. <clears throat> Never complain about the mission or your inadequacy. God knew what he was doing when he assigned you. Yeah, right. I never learned it in my life. I said, oh, maybe you made a mistake and you should have picked somebody else. Why did you pick someone so to do this? You could have picked someone so to do that. And when I came past, became pastor, I thought about a bunch of people that should have been pastors. I said, Lord, you could have picked that person because I'm not ready. I'm not adequate. God said, I'll never ask you what you ready. Yeah, right. I never ask you what you ready. I'm asking you what you willing. See, God knew what he was doing when he assigned you. He knew what you did. And what you needed to become. Obey and trust him to add to you because his will is going to be done in earth as it already is in heaven. So I get to learn, I just gotta say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on. I learned, I just gotta say, you know what? I don't have it, but on the long the way, you're gonna give it to me. I, I don't have it right now, but if I keep walking somewhere along the way, you're gonna give it to me. I, I, we got to get, can I pray to y'all, preach y'all, we got to get yeah. that faith that the old saints had, that, that God told them, go to the store. I don't got no money to go to the store. My kids need some money to food. You've been praying for some food, go to the store. God, I ain't got no money. I heard this moment like this before. I don't have any money. But on the way to the store, somebody stepped up to him and said, look, God told me to bless you. Yeah. And then I, I wouldn't go to your house, but, but it just, I, I saw you on the road. I saw you here. And we think about that, we say that's crazy faith. Baby, you need crazy faith sometimes. Because God says, get up and go to the store. I got it already prepared for you. You just got to obey. I'm going to add to you what you need. Yeah. Yeah. 
Thank you, Lord. I learned something that your inadequacy that will not is not enough to stop God's will. Come on, now. What you don't have is not Woo. enough to stop God's yeah. will. Uh, what, what, what you don't have in you is not enough. See, all He requires of us is two things: faith and obedience. Faith and obedience. Will you get up and will you go? Yes, right. No, no, no. See, see, see. I thought I could not be a father. Said no. Take him home. You gonna learn. Yeah. Take him home. I'm going to train you along the way. You're going to learn how to be a father. You're going to learn. You're going to make mistakes and all those things. But you will learn it. Just take the child home. Yep. Hallelujah. Somebody say go. Oh. Mark 13, 11 says, And when they bring you to trial and deliver you over, do not be anxious beforehand what you are to say, but say whatever is given to you in that hour. Yes. For it is not you who speak, but the Holy Spirit. I love that. Yes. So if you are sent by God and you trust, uh, truly trust and obey God, every deficiency that you have will be rectified when God needs you to perform his will. He says, so when I need you to perform my will, oh, I can't talk. I said, I'll fix the I'll fix the I'll, I'll fix the speech. Lord, I, I'm not courageous. I'll give you some courage. Lord, I, 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 I don't have intellect. I'll give you intellect. Whatever I need you to be, if you say yes, Lord, when you get there, I'll take care of you. Can I preach the three of y'all when I say this? That God gonna put y'all in some rooms that you're not qualified to be in. You're gonna sit at some tables. You're not qualified to be there. You're gonna say, Lord, there's some smart people inside of here. People got money inside of here. They got influence in here. And I'm not equipped to go and talk. And don't even worry about it. If I send you in there, by the time it comes around to you to speak, I will speak through you. As long as you realize it wasn't me talking in that way. It was the Holy Ghost. No, I, I didn't get myself in this room. I didn't bring myself inside of here. It was the Holy Ghost. And when he needs me to speak, I'll say the right things. I'll speak on the anointed. I'll act on the anointed. I'll make decisions under the power of the Holy Ghost. And whatever I need, God said, I'll add it to you. Why? Why? Because the Holy Ghost will make you mission ready by equipping you to do what you could not do on your own. Right. If you're trying to do things and you can do it by yourself, it was not God assigned. When God has a real mission for you, y'all yeah. believe when I say this, yeah. it's going to be something you cannot do without God. Yeah. When God really wants you to do something, it's something you cannot do without God. Yeah. Can I preach the Bible, y'all, when I say yeah. this? Yeah. Sometimes we got men and we have ideas for a business. And me and my wife, we got ideas for a business. And God said, Daniel, you need to understand something that what I'm going to see you to do. You make can make this amount by yourself, but I want you to make this amount. And there's nothing about you that can make that amount. There's nothing about you that can grow this business to that, to that situation, to that level. He said, but when I want to do it, you're going to hear me. When I want to get it done, whatever you don't have, I give it to you. Whatever resources you don't have, I give it to you. Whatever connections you don't have, I give it to you. When you got a ministry, and God says, I want you to see that ministry growing. I want it to be great. I want to do great things. You just think, Lord, let me get 50 people. Lord, let me get 10 people. God says, I never said 10. I never said 50. But I can't see 5,000. I can't see me affecting that many people. He said, that's good. You can't see because you can't do it. But whatever you don't have, I want to give it to you to make sure that you'll be equipped and you'll be mission ready. Somebody said, let them add to you. So God fully equips us with mission essential materials. Hallelujah. That before you go, I got to give you mission essential materials. Yeah. So if I'm sending you an assignment, I got to equip you, right? Hallelujah. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to make sure that you got what you need. You see, God will add, hear me when I say this, the right people to your life. Yes, he will. Yeah. Yes, he will. And I'm preaching right now. I'm preaching right now. To people sometimes we think we don't need nobody. I know what you mean. And I, I, I know you don't need people to a point that you will be in abusive relationships with people. And, and relationships that are not good. But but you need people. God did not make us to be an idol. Amen. Amen. He did not make us to be by ourselves. You don't need people. But what we need is somebody to say the right people. The right people. We need the right people. Sometimes the reason why you messed up is because you want the wrong people. We need the right people. Proverbs 24 and 6. I love Proverbs. I tell you know, people of God, man, you want to get some, some sense, read Proverbs. It says there, 
Uh, for by wise guidance, you can wage your war. Yeah. Uh -huh. And in an abundance of counselors, there is victory. victory. You need people around you that see things that you don't see. Yes. Right. I, I love this about you know President Bill Clinton, that, that when he had a meeting, he would let all of his advisors just go at it. They all fuss and go at it, and he sit there and he listen. Mm -hmm. And he wouldn't say a word. And then at the end, he'd make a decision. But he wanted them to have free course to say what they thought. Yes. Because everyone sees a problem differently, don't yeah. they? Amen. And there's certain angles that that person sees that I don't see because I'm not them. You know, in my, jo in my job, we're trying to get uh, uh, people, we're trying to uh, uh, move certain populations. We're trying, I'm just young, we're trying to get more African-American males to come down there to, to go to school. And we're trying to do that. And I said, well, you know, it, it might help if y'all get some African-Americans. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. Man, they, we want to get people who are in who are having problems in, in, in online training. Like, you know, it may help if you ask some people who are actually going to school right now in, in online classes. Right. You know, you've got to get different ideas, different angles, and, 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 and whatever we do, you gotta look at it, so, okay, you know, I might need this person because you know I may see it this way, but my wife sees something different than I see, right? Amen. I see something different than, than she sees it. We have to have different views of how we see things. And that's why God says in a in abundance of counselors, there is victory. Amen. Yes, Lord. Can I tell you this? You can write it down, you need to hear it. Yes. I'm telling you this, and I, I've said this many times before, that, that, that Bishop Jakes was talking about once before, about how he took the church from West Virginia, mm -hmm. and he took it to Texas, yeah. and how did he make it grow? And people were going to a conference at Baptist, mm -hmm. money to get for him to give them advice. Right. Jesus. And he told them, get a team together. Uh -huh. yeah. And I was like, if I was there, I want money back. You should have said something more than that. Come on now. I thought, it was, I thought it was heavy bigger than that, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm like, name it. Like, you know, I'm like, hey, you know, you could have did more than just tell me to go dip in the Jordan River, you know. Yeah. You know, it could have been more. He said, get a good team together. Good team. That's right. And what I've learned, that is so true. Amen. Keep it when I say this. One of the most important decisions that you will make is who's going to be on your team. Yes. Right. Amen. You are meant to be a pastor. 
you meant to be a preacher, and because sometimes you see that Bishop so and so is doing this, and they can all these deals, and they can do that, and you think you can do what they can do, but you don't see that behind them there's a team of people with degrees and with experience, with expertise, and what they're doing. You just saw them on TV because your team usually behind you. They're not on TV. Amen. And so, the pastors believe. Thank you, Jay. You, you got to be great at everything. You ain't great at everything. I learned that. You ain't great at everything. No, 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 no. It's fine to not be great at everything. Get this. You got to trust God that he will send you the people that have what you lack. And you got to be honest enough to realize you lack some stuff. You think you can do everything, you always might be by yourself. Amen. You can't do everything. Amen. You aren't good at everything. Amen. And God said, I will send people to your life, but you must first be humble enough to know I lack this. I'm not good at this. I, gotta, I, I may be an honest person, maybe a good person, but I'm not good at this. He will send people to your life that are good at what you're not good at. Thank God for my wife. My wife is good at telling me, Daddy, chill out a little bit. Chill out a little bit. The good said, Daniel, come that a little bit different. She's a nice, sweet person. She is. Thank God, Lord. She's a sweet person. I told y'all before, we can go to the, the, the we can go to, to the drive-in, you know, get some burgers and stuff. Regular is nicer to them than they are to her. Yeah, right. She's gonna say, How you doing? Good day. Turn her voice all different. I mean, she has a great voice. She is so sweet. So we can go to rooms. She go around the whole room and speak to everybody. I'm more reserved. I like to be by myself. I'm, I'm really shy around people who I don't know. If I know you, I'm good. We can talk. But I'm not that kind of person to just go around the whole room and speak to people. That's her. Amen. Right? So she gives me what I need. But I'll tell people, did you marry what you need? Because there's some things that she needs. Yes, right. I'm the person that can tell her, baby, it's okay to say no to people. Yes, right. You don't owe everybody all your time and all your space. Yes, right. It's okay to say no. It's okay to have boundaries in your life. You don't have to always let everybody do everything to you and you gotta go do this and do that. It's okay to say no. I got boundaries in my life. You're not coming this far to me. You're not coming this close to me. It's okay to do that. Guess what? We both need each other. Amen. And I appreciate y'all not saying this. Sometimes we're not getting the best out of our marriage because we are so intent on teaching the other person something that we're not learning something from, the, from that person I said. That we know we should be teaching and learning at the same time. Yeah. Come on, Pastor. Sometimes when God sends you to people, don't let your ego run them off. It's okay. It's okay. This is what sometimes I tell people. You can be in a business meeting with people and, 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 and we're talking about doing bigger things with finances or you can be at a conference or something like that and people talking about how to invest and make more money. It always irritates me. The person sits there with $3.55 in their account. Want to talk? Yeah. Right. Yes. Why are you talking? Yeah. Be quiet. Hello, no, I'm quiet inside there. Okay. I don't have anything to add to this conversation. If you got the investments and the money and you take care of your business and things are going good, no, I'm here to listen to you. But, but I've learned that sometimes people's ego wants to be quiet. Yeah. Uh -huh. The ego won't let them say, no, no, no. It's talking about leadership. You let, let nothing in your life that you gotta talk. But it's okay not to know. It's okay not to know something. I'm going to stats class. I'm quiet every time. I'm quiet every week. Dr. Roberts, if he watches this, he's going to probably not say something. It's okay. Dr. Roberts, like, Daniel, do you understand? Every time, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm getting there, sir. I'm getting there. Right. I got nothing to add to this conversation. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. And this one, I'm, I'm going to tell you this, and this is why I don't let your ego mess you up. But also, you know, don't let yourself be feel bad because what you don't have, it's okay that we all got different things. So I didn't do so well in the midterm. I'm just be real with y'all. I'm not school with school. I don't care. I'm, I'm, it's okay. I do so well in the midterm. I care. You know, I'm, I'm, I don't care enough to be prideful. 
Right. Know how you do something right. good. I tried my best, but mm, it didn't go. He called me like, Dave, you know, you got to tighten up and all this stuff. You got to get it together because, you know, you, you were trying to get out this class. And I'm sitting there. I guess he thought it would make me feel bad. <laughs> I'm like, sir, I'm good. Yeah, man. B, get the degrees. Come on. All right. Just being real. You know, I get to see in this class, I get to see two C's in, 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 uh, in my doctoral program. I got none yet. If, if this is the one, God bless you. I walk on this stage. Nobody gonna ask me my GPA with my diploma. My, 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 my. Nobody ask my GPA with my doctor. It's okay, I can be Dr. Baker with a C. It's all right. That's right, Pastor. But I knew I can write. I'm not good at math. It's okay. Because in my job, if I need someone to do math, we have a statistician. We have a statistician who's over there, he's a VP of institutional research. Guess what's gonna happen? I'm gonna go to him. Yes, sir. I am not so egotistical that I would sit in my office and mess something up and mess those numbers up, trying to be like I'm more than what I am when God gave me somebody on my team, y'all gonna hear me, yeah. that can do what I can't do. That's right. Somebody say team. Team. For every mission or assignment in your life, God will assign people to your life. But you must be open to accept the people that God adds to you. Can I tell you this? This is something for us good apostolic and homeless people and, and good people in church. It could be good people of the cross. Let Ms. Dean to say that today. Good people of the cross. They, they will not always be the people that you expect. They won't always be the people that you're used to being around. Say this. I'm gonna go even further. Jay, you know where I'm going. Okay. They won't always be saved. Come on. That's right. That's right. They won't always be believers. That's right. Oh, I'm just preaching to y'all out here. Right. Sometimes people will be on your team who do not serve your God. That's right. Sometimes God will assign people that will help you out in this season for this assignment. And they ain't saying how shall I talk. They don't run around the church. They ain't coming to church. But God says there's something about them that you need. And I will provoke them to bless you. If you can accept them. Accept them. If you can accept people, I will send people to you. I'm going to be real inside of you. I'm going to be real inside of this church. If you all think the multi-million dollars is inside of here, y'all are sadly mistaken. But God says, press down, shaking together, running over, will me and pour it to your bosom. He never said, save me. Right. Never on. said the ones you like being around. That's right. He didn't say your prayer partner. Right. He didn't say your intercession friend. He didn't say your favorite preacher. He said, I will just bring me in. Yes. Amen. That's right. This is what we got to do. God says the right people for the right purpose. This is how I was talking to some young people, and, and, and I, I teach a career exploration class now. And it's, it's really cool because I talk to them about life and about getting a job, and you know, you know about you know uh, moving your career. And I was telling them, I said, one thing about any career you guys want, find a mentor in that career. Yeah. Find somebody who does what you want to, want to do, and if you pray, God will send the right person to you. If you pray, He'll send the right person to you. Because every assignment, you're gonna need some more people. Every assignment, you know, I, 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 as I'm beginning to do, want to do different things, God put different pastors in my life. God put Pastor Burke, Bishop Burke, in my life for a certain season, for a certain reason, to give me certain uh, 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 ideas and certain visions to do certain things, because he was at that level I needed to try to move the church to. So he sent that man. Now, if I was egotistical and saying, well, I don't need no God. We serve the same God, got the same Holy Ghost. Guess what's going to happen? We really messed up. And then on top of this, y'all hear what I'm saying? This. If I think because because they're successful, they won't talk to you, you're totally wrong. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This is what people mess up. They say, yeah. you know what? People ain't going to give you the game. Yeah. They won't tell you. You know, successful people ain't going to tell you the truth to get successful. They ain't going to tell you how to become great and stuff like that. That's a lie. That's right. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I'm telling you this. Ain't nothing more than a successful person want to do than talk about their success. Right. Right. The problem is they don't tell you because you be quiet long enough to hear anything. Come on, Pastor. Come on. <laughs> because you want to give your two cents. And all you got is two cents. Okay. Come on. And then I, I've been around people who 
were successful, they would talk about themselves all day. Yeah. Tell you how they got from here to there and here to there. Just listen to them sometimes. Amen. I've learned that, you know, somebody who really helped me out in the him with things in the church is somebody who probably don't go to church like that. I know I believe the way I believe. I know that much. But not really a safe person, but he gave me some, some insight on how to fix finances. He gave me my wife some insight. Just me hanging around him, eating lunch with him at a job years, years ago. Told me, look, you can do this, and, and you can get this, and you can get all these things. He showed me a, a check stub from, you know, it's only a bank account statement from and his wife was a teacher. He was in the army. They have these great talents. And Lord, y'all got that? So yeah, you can do it too, Daddy. You can be in some way to do those things. I was only talking about what I can do, yeah. about what I have, and my plans, then guess what's going to happen? That person would not be on my team. That's right. Good, Pastor. Jesus. Look, y'all, we got to understand, you ain't good at everything. That's right. Pray to God, send some people to your life. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I say this, and I'm moving on to my next point. We're getting out of here. Do you know, one thing about passion, I told somebody, I said, look, I don't know if I would have kept going. I don't know if I would have kept going. There was a time I was about ready to quit. Not like I was just through, but I was like, I was trying to get things done and get things done in a certain way. But when, when you feel like you're doing it by yourself, you get frustrated, right? right. And here's the thing. God did two things. He sent people to my team. But also, when I started to tell God, I can't do this, my prayers changed. Yeah. My prayers could be like, Lord, help me do this, help me do this. No, no. Lord, I can't do this. Yeah. I'm not good at this. Help me out. Yeah. Yes. Instead of just praying, Lord, I'm going to do it. I'm going to keep on pressing. I'm going to keep on pushing. I'm going to keep on going. Lord, I'm not good at this. Right. It's not working. That's right. Come on. Yeah. 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 You want to preach that, though. Come on. You want to tell God, Lord, it ain't working. Real talk. It ain't working. It should be better. It, yeah. it, it, things are not going good. Yeah. And then guess what happened? Two things happened. I told you, God sent people to add to me on my team. And people who were in there were like, Pastor, I was trying to build a team a long time ago, but you would never release things to me. Come on. Come on. All right. yeah. And it wasn't because I thought they were incompetent. It because I felt like I had to do everything. Yeah. Uh -huh. I had to be everything. And I learned that God said, no, 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 no. They're in there. They were sending through your team. Do you know why they feel so bad? They think that you don't get a team. Wow. They let you do things, but you can release things to them. My God. Jesus. Isn't that how people are sometimes? Yeah. They don't bless others, but don't want to be blessed themselves. Oh, come right. on. That's real bad. Some of y'all like that inside of here. I try to bless y'all. No, don't do that. Don't do that. No, you bless me. I try to bless you. Because right. yeah. I'm on your team. Guess what? You can be on my team as well. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to allow that. Yeah. Let God add people. Somebody give God a praise. But also within ourselves, he'll add qualities that you need. Because we all need certain qualities, don't we? Second mm -hmm. Peter 1 and 5. It says, for this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue. And your virtue with knowledge. And knowledge with self-control. And self-control with steadfastness. Yeah. And steadfastness with godliness. Yeah. And godliness with brotherly affection. And brotherly affection with love. That got me. He said, add all these things. Yeah. Once I get to one level, he said, no, add this. Yes. Well, I got this, add this. Add, add. I got this, add this. Add. Said, keep on adding. He said, keep on adding. See, God wants us to have all these qualities because without them, hear me, the enemy will expose and discredit us in front of the unbelievers. Yeah. Yes, come on, so you can be saved, but if you got no faith, nobody will believe you. You can be saved, but if you're not a virtuous person with integrity, nobody will believe you. You can be saved through the Holy Ghost, but have no knowledge of the scriptures. Oh, I got that one, that one. Because sometimes we, we, can, we can speak in tongues, we can shout, but we won't get the scriptures. Come on now. I like this morning, you know, I was looking for a scripture, and Mother uh, Glory just went and found it for me. I was, I made the scripture, she went and found it. you got to be knowledgeable about the scriptures, about what God is supposed to do. And he said, after you get some knowledge, you need self-control. Hallelujah. It's good to know that maybe I can do this, but should I do this? Because when you get knowledge, you become dangerous, don't you? Come on. Come on now. Come on. You become dangerous. My dad, I told y'all before, my dad, Marty tells it, he, he, he teaches karate. Well, you know, I think he did Jukwon, some kind of Korean martial arts. And he was good. My mom, my mom, yeah, he was good. Man. He could fight. <laughs> so he go ahead and read it. So he could fight. And we were like, yeah, he teach us. I'm going to Heidelberg and get beat up over here. Come on, man. Yeah. Give me the moves. I don't want to lose everybody. 
said, no, the problem with y'all is you're going to learn this love to get yourself hurt. Okay, right. Wow. You're going to learn a couple kicks, yeah. learn a couple punches, go out there and get beat up. Yeah. But see, one thing about knowledge is, you got to understand about knowledge, you must add to knowledge self-control. Come on, Pastor. So do you know that, yeah, I know the scriptures a little bit. It's a little bit. I got a little bit of knowledge about the scriptures. I know I can go on Facebook and embarrass some people. Mm -hmm. I can be in church and embarrass some people. Yeah. But the self-control realizes who will get glory out of that? That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Because we so quick to give people our doctrine and say how great our doctrine is. And we go and do all these things. But is God getting glory or are you getting glory? If people are not walking away edified, that means God will not give glory. They should be built up by what you say, not torn down. Amen. Right. That's why when I go to people's churches now, I preach it. All kinds of churches who are not my same denomination, I'm not the, the denomination, but they're different denominations. I don't go in there and bring down their doctrine. Right. I don't go in there and try to tear things down. Because guess what? God told me to go edify. That's right. Amen. That's self control, Amen. Get this. It's okay to be dangerous. Have self control. Amen. Right. Because if you would rather be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. Oh, come on now. I'd rather be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in war. That means when I have to be dangerous, I come against the enemy, not against people around me. That's right. So then I learn how to wrestle in flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Y'all better hear it. So God says, look, if you don't have these qualities, the problem is that when you get on the stand against the enemy, he's going to discredit you. He's going to say, yeah, man, you can preach, but he ain't going to sell drunk. Come on. Amen. Wow. That's good, Pastor. No. That's John, John can show the same. He ain't got no faith. Yeah, yeah. And the Scott, man, he can teach that word, but guess what? He got no virtue to it. Yeah. Okay, I mean, preach when I said this. You know, to the so-and-so, man, she can really run for God, but she has no steadfastness. Any small thing come against her, she's going to quit. Come on now. With the devil, they said, God, you need these things because the devil is not coming to your strengths, he's gonna attack you in your weaknesses. Right. Get out of here. The purpose of the Holy Ghost is to convict you of your inadequacy, it always tells you, Hey, you got some work to do. That's right. That's oh, yeah, you really preached this Sunday, yeah. you got some work to do. You really did some great things, you ministered great, you got some work to do. That's a great thing for you, but you got some work to do, and he reminds you of your need of these characters. A lack of any of these qualities will render you ill-equipped to be an expert witness for God. If I don't have these things, I can't be a witness for God. But knowing that Peter said that we should make every effort to supplement ourselves with these qualities. That means I gotta make sure I put some effort in. So why do we need to work for what God wants to give us? Yeah, come on, come on. And it got me. He said you make every effort. Effort, right? So why not a work for what God wants to give me, Pastor Bill said? God said, we are not working to get it from God. That's right. We are striving to bring our flesh under subjection so that we can realize that we need them and surrender the Holy Spirit so we can add them. So God says, the effort comes to, I must humble myself to realize I don't have all these things. I must humble myself to realize that I need and therefore, the work is not that God will give me, that I can get myself in trouble. The work is not that I can achieve knowledge, that I can achieve steadfastness, that I can achieve godliness. That's not the work. The work is to humble myself, bring that flesh under subjection to realize that, Daniel, you can preach, but you need self-control. I need to humble myself so that, Daniel, you can minister, but you need virtue. You need knowledge. That's what God said the Holy Ghost does. It commits you that on your best on your greatest day, you still need some work. And God said, if you do that, out of the Spirit will add these things to you, but the work is not that you get them. The work is that, Lord, I come to a place where I realize I need them. Yeah. Oh, Satan said it best. I just love this song. I need thee. Oh, Lord, I need thee. Every hour. On my best day, I need Jesus. On my worst day, I need Jesus. When I'm riding high, I need Jesus. Humble of a know that day you need 
self-control. You need some virtue. You need some knowledge. You need God to work on you. I don't care what you think about me. God, why you put me on this pedestal? Baby, at the end of the day, I stand the tallest when I'm on my knees. I'm the tallest when I'm on my knees saying, Lord, I need you to work on me. Three minutes, five minutes, not food. She'll be out here. First, second Peter 1 and 8 says, For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, that means if I have these qualities and they are increasing, they are growing in my spirit, they keep you from being, get this, ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Without them, you're going to be ineffective and unfruitful. You're going to have knowledge of God, but you will not be effective. You will have knowledge of God, but you won't be fruitful. Let me tell you this. Those are two things that I never want to be. I never want to be ineffective. I never want to be unfruitful. You can work hard and give your all and still be ineffective. You can work hard and give your all and still be unfruitful. Y'all leave me out here if y'all want to. Because y'all know the same thing happen to y'all sometimes. The Lord, I strive. I work hard. I knock out any fruit. I work hard and I've not been affected because I've learned something. Effort does not guarantee fruit. Yes, Come on, help us. Help us now. Get made y'all want to. I've been working for a long time. I've been just striving and striving and nothing changed. And why nothing changes is because you are not us to say, Lord, I've been working. Nothing's happening. My father grows crops. I'll tell you before. He grows crops. And he came down and saw my little little beers I put out there and everything. He's like, Nate, he do this, he do that. Like, Papa ain't got time for that. Okay. You know, he got time for that. Papa, I'm good. No, 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 no. He said, Daddy, he said, Papa, I've been working hard. Because you know, it's hard when someone criticizes you when you're working. Alright. Ain't it? Just me. Every now and then. It's hard. Like, Papa, I've been sweating out here. I don't want to really, really hard. And you come out here, and I'm proud of my little tomatoes. <laughs> I'm proud of my little small little jalapenos. And, and I know they ain't the ones you got back home, and all this stuff. And I know it ain't what you got, all of the peas and stuff that you got. I know it's not that, but I'm proud of this. And he says, Daddy, I'm just trying to make you fruitful. Oh, That's right. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Ooh, I want to preach the five of y'all when I say that, because you've been working and working and don't see any results. And when somebody comes to you and tell you, I just want to make you fruitful. I just want to show you a more excellent way. I don't want you to get stressed and stress yourself out and never get anything. But we let the fact that we've been working so hard. That you didn't see my work. You didn't see my effort. You didn't see the time I put in. I understand all of that. But I don't want you to work hard and not be fruitful. You want to? Ain't that well? That's good. Yeah. You know, Pastor, I'm gonna tell you, I was saying, but, 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 me, I'm gonna tell you sometimes, you know, we, 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 we gotta make sure that even when our wife cooks something, you know, look, look, we, we gotta tell them, we, we, nice as we can, but at the same time, we gotta be honest. Are they honest with us? Amen. Amen. Well, I, I was worried yesterday. I would think the whole house was nothing to have the wife gone. It's an unwritten rule. The benefits of that. This is the hungry rule we got in the house. I said, Lord, please don't let come here and find something. <laughs> Amen. You're going to set me off. I'm working hard for that. We need everything. But you know, we got to hear it, don't we? We got to hear it, don't we? But we, we, we have to hear it. He said, one day, good job, but behind the toilet, you didn't, you missed that spot. I want to make sure you know that that's what you need to do. And sometimes our effort makes us not want to hear people that will make us fruitful. I can't tell you. I'm telling you once. I'm a little salty. I can't do it. God bless you guys. I can't do it. He'll do it. He'll say, I'm a little salty. Yeah. Uh -huh. Can't do it. Right? But God says, that's our problem. He said, that you don't have these qualities inside of you, you're going to be working, but you're going to be ineffective. You're going to be unfruitful. Effort does not guarantee fruit. 
Y'all say it with me. Effort, Effort does not, does not guarantee, guarantee fruit. fruit. Yes, Lord. Oh, God. Thank you, Lord. I can work all day in the garden that I want to. After sweating, after just about the, you know, about the pass out, after working very hard. But there are rules to gardening. Yeah. And if I don't follow the rules, I don't get the fruit. And we've been around ministries for a long time that never grow. People that never grow. And they work so hard. And I feel so bad for them. Because they're working hard, but they never grow. Because they have rules that you got to follow. That's yeah. all. I don't want the scripture. I'll give you some something out here. It's 1 Corinthians 9 and 24. It says, do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one received the prize? Not everybody will be a winner. Thank you. Right. Come on, Amen. Amen. Everybody can run. Everybody will be a winner. That's right. Hear me when I say this. Everybody can exert energy. Uh -huh. But some people are simply wasting energy. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. I, 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 I had, uh, I'm I had some students and they just turned in the assignment. The assignment was to submit your sources. Not write the paper yet. Submit the sources. Right. right. How about I had three returning a paper already? Wow. <laughs> they worked really, really hard. Turn that paper. And oh. never read the instructions. Wow. Oh, wow. Just working. Working. Ah. I said, Lord, I told him, look, give y'all some advice. Read the instructions first. Read the instructions. Please, do. Please read the instructions. I told the people one time, I had one time, people one topic to write about it. There's three topics on there. Sometimes they'll pick all three, write about all three. Wow. <laughs> and you're wasting energy. Yeah. You're wasting time. Everybody's running. Uh -huh. But everybody's not winning. Get this. First Corinthians 9 26. Paul begins to say what happened. So I do not run aimlessly. Yeah. Amen. Just. In it to be in it. Run to be running. I do not box as one beating the air. Right, right. You ever heard of when boxes box is called getting yeah. punched from? Right. That means you keep throwing punches, keep throwing punches, and you can land any of them. Wow. And what happens is after a while, the first couple rounds, you good, right? Right. I'm just throwing haymakers trying to get you. I missed this, okay. Just throwing, trying to miss, trying to get you. I didn't get you this time. You keep doing that. By the fifth round, though. Oh, you, step out. Yeah. you just woke out. Because all you hit with the air. Yeah. You never hit me. You hit the air. I've learned. You know, they say with boxing. I'm there, little box. Say pick your spots. Yeah. Pick your spots. When you, when you punch, you're hitting something. You know. Don't just, don't just throw punches. Be throwing punches. And I said, Lord, now with ministry in my life, I need some direction. I don't want to go through a box in the air. I don't want to waste my time. Lord, where do you want to put my money? Where do you want me to put my effort? Energy. I'm not gonna do what I want to do, Lord. I want to do what you tell me to do. God wants to add to you so you can stop, stop spending your wheels in ministry and stop spending your wheels in life. You can't be successful in God assigned mission unless you got as God assigned mission essential qualities to you. You cannot be successful unless God adds to you. That's right. Yes, Jesus. That's it. Hallelujah. Y'all can leave the day and keep on spinning your wheels. Uh-huh. Box in the air. Yeah. How much you tired? And got no fruit. Come on, Jesus. Jesus. That's on you. Then you come to pastor. You won't counsel it. I hear you out. I'll listen to you. But at the end of the day, I want to ask you, did God take you there? Yeah. Amen. Did you make God how? Ask God, where did my help come? Yeah. Yeah. Did you ask God to send me my ticket? Alright. I, I, I just read. I just read and give and just just no 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 no. Lord, you gotta ask some stuff to me. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Amen. That's good, Pastor. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Y'all said about operating. Make y'all mad, man. That's okay. Yes. 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 Yes.